Microplastics are hiding in places you'd never expect, from baby food to your floors. And they're showing up in everyday items that you're using constantly and your family is being exposed without even realizing it. And if you don't know where they are, you can't make informed choices, which leaves you stuck in confusion or fear. I'm Dr. Yvonne Burkhart, and as a toxicologist, I've spent decades studying how everyday chemicals affect our health. This video reveals seven of the most overlooked sources inside your home and how to start reducing your exposure today so you can protect your family with confidence and stop feeling like you're always one step behind. But this isn't one of those laundry lists of all the sources of microplastics thrown at you randomly to scare you. I'm sharing them in order of importance based on evidence to help you prioritize what you choose to swap. Because let's be honest, microplastics are everywhere, but with this toxicologist priority list, you'll have a playbook to follow so you can avoid the fear and worry. First, bottle water. It often feels like the smarter, safer choice, and it seems cleaner, more filtered, and more tightly regulated. But did you know that a single plastic bottle of water contains approximately 240,000 particles per liter, 90% of which are nanoplastics. That's more than double the amount found in regular tap water. And it's not just about where the water comes from, it's about what happens after it's bottled. When plastic bottles are exposed to heat, let's say in your car, your garage, or on a sunny store shelf, the plastic starts to degrade and that degradation leaches tiny plastic particles into the water itself. So you could actually be paying more to drink water that contains more plastic than before. So choosing glass bottled or filtered tap water at home instead of the plastic packaged water bottle is actually one of the most impactful changes that you can make. And it's a small shift with a big ripple effect. Protecting your health, reducing waste, and cutting down on daily exposure without overhauling your entire routine. These are the types of swaps that low tox living is all about. Practical, sustainable, and completely doable. So I need to share a quick story. I drank bottled water for most of my life because we thought it was cleaner than tap water. And when I moved away for college, I used to buy those big, uh, I think they were maybe like three gallon jugs, plastic jugs with a spout. The water tasted nasty like plastic, but it was the best that I could afford, so I drank it anyway. And little did I know that the plastic taste was me actually drinking microplastics, nanoplastics, and plasticizer chemicals. I cringe thinking about it now, but I had no idea what it was back then, and I'm not upset about it. I'm glad I figured it out so I can share it with you so you don't make the same mistakes I did. And what matters most are the decisions that we make today and going forward. Could your favorite pan be doing more harm than good? I want you to picture this. You've got a trusty nonstick pan that's been in the family for years. It has seen, I can't even say, hundreds of breakfasts, eggs, pancakes, stir fries, and it still gets used almost every single day. But underneath all of that familiar use, those little scratches and scuffs could be sending plastic particles into your meals. Many nonstick pans are coated with Teflon or PTFE, which is what makes cleanup a breeze, but those coatings don't last forever. When a pan gets scratched or overheated, the coating starts to break down, and that's when tiny particles flake off and end up in your food. Scientists call those microplastics. So every time you stir, scrape, or flip pancakes, you could actually be releasing these particles into your food. And most scratches can't be seen by the naked eye. And what makes this especially tricky is that these pans often look totally fine on the surface, but heat, time, those things do damage. And most families are still using those scratched pans every single day. I did it myself too, without having any idea. Over time, it just started, you know, sticking. It wasn't nonstick anymore but I kept using it because that was the only pan we had. And then I read a study showing that every scratch releases over 9,000 particles of that nonstick coating into your food and a crack or a broken coating can shed up to 2.3 million particles. And that's why it makes such a difference to phase out those older nonstick pans that you've got, switch to cast iron, stainless steel, or ceramic. And I wanna be clear, I'm not talking about those ceramic coatings because they have similar problems to any nonstick coating. I avoid coated cookware altogether. 
Not to mention the options that I mentioned don't just hold up better over time. They are giving you peace of mind because you know you're not cooking with materials that are breaking down and leaching plastic into your food. This is a simple, powerful upgrade that supports the kind of low tox kitchen that you're working toward. And you're doing everything you can to nourish your kids. But what if the most basic pantry staples were working against you? Think about things like baby bottles and those popular squeezy pouches. Studies show that baby bottles can release huge numbers of microplastics into milk, anywhere from 14,000 or more than 4 million particles a day. And when you sterilize them, something that a lot of parents do, myself included, I did that, actually increases the leaching. And the baby food pouches or squeezies are not innocent either. When you store them at room temperature or in the fridge for six months or more, they can release millions, even billions of microplastics and nanoplastics. So that figure came from research on food pouches in particular. And researchers also found that polyethylene-based pouches shed far more particles than polypropylene containers. And if you think about it, they're called squeezies because babies can squeeze the food out of them. And that squeezing action is encouraging more leaching of microplastics. And this matters a lot because infants are especially vulnerable to toxins. Their detox systems are still developing and their smaller bodies are more sensitive to chemical exposures. Even when parents are making careful choices, the plastics and packaging that the food comes in are sneaking chemicals into your child's body. That's why choosing glass, whether it's the bottles for milk or the jars for baby food, is a simple but powerful shift because you're not just avoiding the added sugars or fillers, you're also cutting down on one of the most pervasive and sneaky sources of plastic exposure during your child's most critical years. But again, don't feel bad if you've given your child squeezies or milk in plastic bottles because I did it. I thought it was the best that I could do at the time with the information that I had. And new data comes out every day. And that's why I'm telling you this now so that you can make informed choices today and don't feel the guilt. I know that mom guilt is deep and it's real about what you've done in the past. So now think about every day you're cutting and prepping your meals on a cutting board, which could actually be adding microplastics to your food. Picture this, a plastic cutting board, the white ones, with lots of decarbed grooves from chopping vegetables and meats, those might look harmless, but those scars, right? Those tell a different story. And that's because plastic boards wear down over time. Every time you slice or cut into that board, those deep grooves aren't just disappearing. They're cutting off and grinding little slivers of plastic that end up right in your food. So those tiny bits of shavings, those get mixed into your meals and over months or years of use, that buildup can actually become significant. And most people don't notice that the board is deeply scarred, scratched or stained. And by then, a lot of exposure has already happened. Research shows that people could ingest up to 50 grams of microplastics from a polyethylene chopping board every year. And just so you know, 50 grams of sugar is about a quarter of a cup or roughly 12 teaspoons. That's why switching to wood or bamboo boards makes a big difference. They're durable, natural, and hold up better under a knife, giving you a safer surface to prep your meals without the hidden worry of plastic shavings ending up in your food. You think of laundry as a chore, but it could also be one of the biggest hidden sources of microplastic exposure in your home. So if you imagine a load of workout clothes that are made of polyester and nylon, those going into the wash three times a week. With every spin cycle, those fabrics are shedding invisible fibers that don't just stay in the washer. They make their way into your home and beyond because they're getting washed away with the water. Synthetic fabrics like polyester, nylon, and spandex shed microfibers when they are washed. These aren't just staying in your washer. They move into your water system, your air, and then eventually into your lungs. Because most machines don't have filtration to catch them, although you can install one. And dryers are releasing them into the air through vents. So if you can imagine, each load is adding up, polluting your home and the outside environment. That's why it helps to rethink the way that we're doing laundry. So you might want to consider a fiber catching laundry bag or an external filter or a ball that encourages less shedding. These are just small adjustments, but again, they stack up fast because there are hundreds and thousands of microplastics being shed per load of laundry. 
Even if you're careful about what comes into your home, what's already there might be just as concerning. Imagine a toddler crawling across the living room rug, grabbing toys that have rolled under the couch or brushed up against the sofa. Each of those toys is now coated in a fine layer of dust, oftentimes not visible to the naked eye. And these dust particles are carrying tiny plastic particles from their hands, from the toys, into their mouths, noses, and airways. And this dust isn't just cells and dirt. It is actually a cocktail of fibers, particles, and residues from furniture, electronics, clothing, fragrances, and a lot of it contains plastic. And babies and pets are especially vulnerable because they spend hours close to the ground where these particles are accumulating. So they're breathing them in, they're putting the dust covered toys in their mouth, and even the most intentional cleaning habits can make it worse because some sprays and air fresheners are adding more synthetic volatile organic compounds into the air, making the dust even more hazardous. And that's why it helps to shift the way that we're cleaning too. So consider using a vacuum with a HEPA filter to capture those particles and not let them escape back into your home. Try wet dusting instead of dry wiping. And what that means is wetting a cloth and wiping down the surface so you're not kicking up those dust particles that have settled on the surfaces. And choosing fewer synthetic furnishings. These all cut down on the amount of plastic dust that is lingering in your home. And these aren't complicated changes because they can make your home feel noticeably fresher and of course safer for everyone. So I'm sure you can imagine that after the end of a long day, you finally get to slow down, put on a kettle of water and you curl up with a cup of tea. I know a lot of people love it. I do too, it's so relaxing. And it feels calm, safe, it's part of your routine, maybe even a ritual. But unfortunately, it could be delivering plastic straight into your mug. Some premium tea brands use plastic mesh bags to hold the leaves in place. And while they look sleek and fancy, when you pour boiling water over them, they're breaking down fast. Studies show that a single plastic tea bag can release over 11 billion microplastic particles into your cup. And those particles, you're drinking them. And what's worse is that nobody is even thinking about this because the bag looks natural. It just looks like a piece of paper or it looks just like a silk. The tea is labeled organic, but those synthetic materials are right there in your cup. And that's why it helps to rethink even the little rituals like your evening tea, because these things are supposed to be promoting health, not harming it. So that's why choosing loose leaf teas with stainless steel strainers or going with brands that are using plastic free bags helps to keep that ritual safe and healthy. I personally drink matcha, which doesn't require a tea bag because you consume the whole leaf. And it's a simple shift that makes your wind down, calming ritual actually restorative. Microplastics might be everywhere, but you don't have to feel powerless. Now that you know where they're hiding, you can take smarter steps to reduce your family's exposure without falling into overwhelm or fear. And remember that small changes matter. Even one swap at a time can add up to a safer, more confident home. And now you know where microplastics are secretly hiding. There's one daily habit that might be making the problem worse. Most people trust it completely, but it could be flooding your meals with hormone disruptors, nanoplastics, and other chemicals without you realizing it. So make sure to watch this video next to uncover the hidden risks of microwaving food in plastic and the simple swaps that can dramatically reduce your exposure. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next video.